Hi folks, his nibs here, also known as Norman, and uh, looking down to my shirt pocket to pull out the pen. And this is what we're going to take a look at today. This is Asfine's second model produced, and this is the P20, which is a, a piston filler. And you can see some ink in that ink window right below the clip because I shot the writing portion of this second. Very confusing, I know. Um, so, oops, sorry about that. So, uh, Asfine um, came out with the P20 in four different colors or four different uh, colored materials. It's not, they're not solid colors. And this is the, once again, come on, Norman, you can do this. I know you can do it. There we go. This is the gorgeous ocean blue. And uh, I want to show this to you shortly in more detail, but I must ask you to please like the video, share the video, uh, what else must I ask you to do? Press the panic button and, uh, oh, join. Yeah. Join the channel. So you get notifications through that uh, notification bell of new videos as they arise. And see you momentarily with a closer look at the P20 from Aspen. So, let's take a look at the second Asfine model. And this is one of the currently four colors of the P20. And this one is the Ocean Blue, which I think is really very lovely. And just to remind everyone, this was Asfine's first endeavor. The V169 with the raindrop overlay. And this is a vac filler. And I'll link below to uh, my video on this pen which is entitled something like uh, Mystery Solved, How to Pronounce Asfine, which I got from Brittanum, the horse's mouth. And uh, a lot of reviewers of the brand haven't watched that video because they still say Asfine. Anyway, this is the P20, which is a piston filler. And Asfine's second offering. Uh, conical shaped finials, both on the cap and on the piston knob. A very wide cap band, looks terrific with a, a Greek key motif. And it comes all the way to the end of the cap, which is a nice feature for protecting the material of the cap from possible breakage. It has a roller clip, which slides in and out of a pocket very easily. Let me switch this, get a little more. Get a little closer here. Um, and the very prominent ink window. But you don't have to take the cap off to see the level of ink in your pen, which is another thoughtful addition. 
Okay, everybody's doing this, so let me do it. Also, this takes... Just about two turns to remove the cap. And this is a medium nib. You can see the M, I believe, there in the center of the nib. Yeah, I think that's visible without me changing to the the macro setting. And when I first got this, I haven't filled it yet, that's part of the video, but when I first got this, I wondered if it might be defective, because as I turned down the piston knob, that's where it stops. And I'm used to piston fillers where the piston, if there is an ink window, goes beyond that ink window. So I wondered if it was uh, a defective pen or part of the design. So I again contacted Brittenham directly and he said, no, that's, that's how we designed it and has no problem filling that way. So that'll be interesting to see. And you can possibly just make out the movement of the piston through the translucency of the material used. So it's a very comfortable pen, uh, perfectly sized for me, and I almost never post caps. It can be posted, and it posts beyond the piston knob, so you don't have that usual problem of if you're twisting the cap, you're going to twist the, the piston knob and express ink by mistake. However, it's not the most secure. Well, it is pretty secure, but you ha still have a little bit of flex even when you're pressed down as far as the cap will go. But for those who like to post caps, it's not that back-weighted this way, although slightly so. Um, obviously makes the pen quite a bit longer. But it's secure enough for a place to rest the cap, if that's what you'd like to do, rather than holding the cap aside, which is what I usually prefer to do. So in the next scene, let's get some uh, ink in this baby and see how she writes. Again, I've, I've not adjusted the nib at all. I uh, just looked through it, the end on of the tines through a loop and they're perfectly aligned. So I'm not gonna bother with uh, seeing if any adjustment is needed. I want everybody who's viewing this to have the experience of what probably comes out of the box. Okay, I'm always trying to, I'm always fiddling with my camera setup. So this is sort of an older setup where I'm going to be writing behind the camera, which is not the most efficacious way to do it, but I like the distance of how this is set up. So I'm going to make use of uh, Hongdian Blue ink, which I haven't tried before. And blue pen, blue ink, what more could anybody want? Get that in place. And you can see the color a little bit there. Before I ink it, let me remove the nib unit, which is very easy to do if you want to try different nibs in the pen. You have your 
obviously your nib, feed, and collar. And one thing I really like here, let me get out a little pointer from my desk drawer, is they've thoughtfully put one here and one here. You can see the uh, white O-rings. So you're going to get a really, really terrific seal here on the feed and nib section. Screw this back in. Yeah, it's very secure. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the piston knob as far as it will go, which is there. You can barely Let's see, if I move it back up a little bit, you can barely see it moving there and where it stops in the ink window. Into the liquid gold. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way so you can hopefully see. I don't know if that's better or worse. You can see the uh, ink window here and probably light off because I'm my hand was blocking the light and here we go well, yep draws up ink fine even stopping at that point now to get a full fill I might need to do that once or twice uh, but that's the, the case with just about all pistons and you can see the ink. And even when held down, it's uh, looks like it pretty well filled the entire piston reservoir. And this is uh, from what I've read have a capacity of about 1.8 to 2 milliliters of ink within the uh, ink reservoir, so that's plenty. Uh, move my Hongdian blue out of the way. And again, writing in front of the camera at sort of an awkward angle, but stop complaining, Norman, let's go. Now, just as smooth as uh, this first edition of Asfine Pens. Really smooth nib. This is a medium gold toned. steel nib and this is a this is really a true western uh, western medium of course with a with a chinese i mean with a japanese nib uh, a medium tends to write as a western fine but the chinese have with their recent nib production have really uh seem to follow our widths as they designate their nib sizes. So I'd say this is definitely a, a Western medium. It's a stiff nib as it is designed to be. Uh, very smooth, as I said, but you're not going to get too much line variation with this. But a little bit if you press down. In my earlier videos uh, on YouTube, going back 15 or 20 years, I would always end with a quote. And I haven't done that for a while, although I see some other YouTube pen reviewers have borrowed that from me. But let me see if I can bring one to mind.
Okay, this is, uh, let me move my Xi'an Warrior out of the way so I can push the paper up a bit. The purple sail above me catches all the strength of summer. It's from, that's a song lyric from Incredible String Band. And the song is entitled Painting Box. So I'm as equally impressed with the, the action of this nib. And let me see if I can just show writing from the side with this camera angle. as I was with the uh, V169 overlay pen. So this is the V20, and currently it has uh, four color combinations, which you'll see in my newsletter uh, photographs, which I'll also link to this will this video will go into the newsletter um, and I really like this I don't have an acrylic that looks anything like this which is why I selected it very very nice and aptly named ocean blue I mean you can really see the the waves and the sky and Tahiti and here's here's Tahiti and uh, Bali High, which is over there. I'm reading uh, Tales of the South Pacific at the moment, and uh, the current story that I'm reading takes place on Bali High during, during World War II. Anywho, that's it for this scene. And let me get my handy dandy control to stop the video. Having spent a few days now writing with uh, the Asfine P20, I, I've really come to enjoy this pen. Um, it's a gorgeous turned acrylic, this color. And just a couple little things I've noticed. One, I, I was surprised that there's no branding on the outside of the pen at all. You would expect with a cap band of this size that uh, Asfine, perhaps even made in China, would be there. But the entire cap band is this Greek key pattern, which is really lovely. Uh, it's not until you take a look at the nib itself that you see Asfine on the nib as well as the point size, and in this case, a medium. One correction I wanted to make is I mentioned earlier that if you decide to post the cap, it's still a little wobbly. If you push just a little bit further down, uh, which I didn't do initially, it's it's perfectly solid and you're not going to, there's no play in the cap at all. So uh, if you do like to post your caps, it's because of the acrylic material it's, and it's really not very back weighted and it's perfectly secure. Uh, if you push a little further than I did initially. And uh, it's a gorgeous pen and makes me want to get the other three acrylics as well, although I love this color and I've been sort of mesmerized, not color, this pattern. Uh, I've been sort of mesmerized by the ocean blue acrylic uh, you can really get lost 
in it. It's a nice meditation practice to just stare at the acrylic of this pen uh, as it moves like ocean waves. So I hope you enjoyed this brief look at a terrific new model from Asfine. And I, I have to say the smoothness of this nib no longer surprises me, but is worth commenting on. Having imported Chinese pens for a quarter of a century, um, nibs were never their strong suit. Uh, some of the real mass-produced pens, like the uh, oh, the Hero 329, uh, were fine. No pun intended. They were all fine or extra fine. Uh, but they had really gotten the process down because they produced millions of those a year. But the more, the smaller brands and the more one-off uh, models, not a lot of t uh, attention was paid to the quality of the nibs. That has really changed with Chinese pens in the last couple of years, I've noticed. They've, they've really paid attention to nibs and nib alignment and the smoothness is <laughs> incredible. Uh, some pens are so glass, glass like the nibs uh, when you put them to paper that there's almost no feedback at all. Some people love that. I like a little bit of feedback and this has a little bit of feedback as I scribble these important, very important notes here on the paper. This is a uh, personal hidden alphabet, which only a very few people even know what this means. And if I ever find those people and they can explain it to me, I'll be in good shape. So the nibs are, are uh, worth commenting on with the the newest brands and makes of Chinese fountain pens. So that's all she wrote. And I am out of here.